Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries on YouTube. The Presser Canario is a very serious animal. In the beginning, the purpose for the Presser Canario was to ward off wild dogs, catch large animals, cattle and, and such to uh, prepare it for slaughter, and to be an all around protection, family oriented dog. Presser Canario is a breed that is originating from the Canary Islands. It was created in the 1700s by a bunch of farmers, they used these dogs in the beginning as cattle herders and protection dogs for their, uh, their flock. I discovered the Presa Canario breed in the early 2000s. Uh, I found out from a friend of mine about the breed and I started to do a little research with finding out the, the temperament, uh, the basic characteristics of the dog. And as I did more and more research, I realized that this was something that I may be interested in incorporating in my family. The thing that excited me the most about this breed when I first saw it, of course, was the way it looked. Uh, it, was, it was a huge dog. It, was, it, it had a beautiful uh, coloring and markings. Uh, it was very fascinating from the eyes perspective. As I investigated it and, and, and got to know the breed a little more, uh, what, what fascinated me even more was the temperament of the dog and its ability to move at such a huge size. Uh, also, I was impressed with the bite, the, the biting mechanism of the dog. When I saw it uh, chomp down on something for the first time, it was very impressive. I've been dealing with this breed for about 12 years now and um, over the years, I've had a lot of experience with different styles of presses, different temperaments of presses, and I come to realize that because the breed is fairly new, being uh, recognized as a breed in itself uh, in 1989, there's still a lot of development taking place within the breed. So my experience with this breed, I have had tall presses, short presses, narrow presses, wide presses, skittish presses, uh, fiery presses, the temperament, size, functionality, everything is all over the place right now in this breed. If you do your research, you'll find that the breed was split up between two different ideologies on the island. You had the Grand Canaria side, which they bred for functionality and they bred for purpose. They bred for working and for protection, for, uh, for that type of thing. And then you had the, and they cared less about how the dog looked. They only cared more, more about how the dog functioned and that the dog could work and do the specific uh, jobs that they had in line for the dog to do. The, the catch, the uh, protecting the, the, the cattle, uh, the warding off uh, 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 intruders, things of that sort. Yeah. Then you had the Tenerife side of the island where they focus more on the dog's exhibition and the way the dog uh, looked, size, markings, coloring, uh, things of that sort. They, they didn't care a, about too much about the, the dog's actual functionality and the purpose of the dog, more or less, they cared more how the dog looked. So this was a, a, a more of a, 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 a softer temperament, a show dog style dog, as opposed to a working style dog. Because of the different ideologies between the Grand Tenerife and the Grand Canaria, uh, you have differences in uh, temperament and no real consistency. So if you don't have a grip on the bloodlines and an understanding on what bloodline links back to what part of that, of that difference, you're gonna have a dog that may be more aggressive or you're gonna have a dog that be, may be more passive. There will be no balance. That's why it's important that whatever person is dealing with this breed, that they become knowledgeable of both sides you can have a different, uh, a whole different style of dog in one 
specific breeding. You can have a breeding made up of tall dogs and short dogs, wide dogs and narrow dogs, uh, high drive and lazy dogs. With every, with every breeding, you're gonna have fluctuation. The reason is, is the breed is relatively new and there hasn't been enough consistent breedings of good quality dogs to, to make it a, 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 a pattern. Right now you have people that are uneducated, that are just putting dogs together. They do have no understanding of the, the, the differences in the breed, temperament wise, functionality wise, and they're just going by look and look alone. And that's what's hindering the progress of the breed. The Presa Canario is an awesome breed if the breeder is knowledgeable enough to know exactly what they're putting together when they're putting two dogs together. This breed can be balanced. It can be a family dog. It can be people friendly. It all depends on what the, what the uh, vision of the breeder is and the knowledge as well. When looking at a Presa Canario puppy, temperament should be the first thing that uh, someone should look for. Uh, next, it should be the bone structure and the correctness of the structure. The structure of the dog should be the next thing that uh, someone should look for when they're looking at a Presa Canario puppy. Also, uh, they should be looking for um, the, the height and uh, relevant to the rest of the puppies, you should, you should line your pup up with the rest of the litter and see where he is height-wise when he gets to four, three to four months as well. Being a responsible breeder and understanding the fluctuation with inside the breed, I go through a lot of uh, questionnaires before I decide to place a dog with a new home. I need to know exactly what the purpose of the, the buyer is when he's buying this dog. I need to know what, his, what he expects out of the dog and its entirety. Uh, so what I like to find out is, is I would like to know, I like to know whether or not the dog is going to have a apartment. Is the dog going to have a yard? If the dog is going to have a yard, is there any other dogs surrounding that yard? How well is the, is the fencing around the yard? Uh, does the owner have any experience with a large breed uh, or an, ag uh, 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 an aggressive uh, style breed? Uh, what, and if so, what type of dogs had that person had experience with? Um, what, do, do they want a family friendly dog or do they want a protection uh, uh, aggressive dog? Um, are there going to be small children around? Um, you know, uh, are, are there going to be any other animals at all around? Um, what kind of neighborhood is the dog going to be in? Is it going to be in a rural area? Is it going to be in the, in the woods? Are there going to be a lot of different animals around the house? Do you want a quiet environment where you live? Um, there, there's a lot of different questions that need to be asked because it, different environments bring out different characteristics inside different areas of the bloodlines that are inside this breed. So as a, as a, as a responsible breeder and knowing the, uh, the fullness, the full scope of this particular breed, I need to have all of these questions answered before I place a dog. The flip side of that, I have to uh, know exactly what I'm dealing with before I place a, a pup to a new home. So I, therefore I don't advertise the dogs uh, before I sell them because I like to go through the litter myself and temperament test the dogs see which dogs are going to be on the more aggressive side of the coin, which dogs are going to be on the more passive side of the coin, uh, which dog is going to be the taller, which is going to be the shorter, which one is going to be, uh, you know, what area of functionality the dog is going to be before I place the dog. That is why I keep for at least uh, three to four months before I sell anything out of the litter or place it in a new home because everything that I produce is not for sale. Some dogs are not even uh, uh, worthy to be sold. They're better off as pets 
and therefore adopted out. We don't uh, like to place pups in new homes until they are, have been temperament tested and health tested first. And that takes at least three, but most likely four months. So if, you, if you're expecting to, to, to pick a press a canary out at eight weeks, don't expect to really know what you're getting because it takes a little bit of time to cipher through all of the issues and concerns temperament wise before knowing exactly what, you, what will fit your home and your uh, personality. I, the, the ideal environment for a Presa Canario, uh, the myth is, is that you can keep them in an apartment. But if I was to recommend the type of home for this specific breed, I would recommend a house and one with a nice size yard because Presa Canarios have a lot of high drive, a lot of energy, and they need a lot of space to really be happy and uh, functional. Through my experience, I wouldn't put a class or a, a specific type of person uh, with this breed because the breed has such a fluctuation that I honestly feel that it could fit with anybody as long as I know exactly what that person is, is typically looking for. If you want a, a, a happy, friendly, uh, people-friendly uh, dog, uh, the Presa Canario can supply that need. Uh, if you want a protection, aggressive, uh, very weary, suspicious of everything style dog, the Presa Canario can also fit that particular need. The dog has so many different functionalities within its uh, entirety that it can fit pretty much any home and any environment as long as the, the breeder is educated and understands the lines that the dog consists of and, and has a clear understanding of who they're placing the dog with, it, it can be a, a, a dog for everybody. The Presa Canario overall is a pretty solid dog health-wise. However, over the years with my experience, there are some issues that, uh, that engulf this breed. Uh, I want to discuss a few of those issues that I feel are prominent and that as a, a, a potential uh, a person looking to get into this breed, uh, these are the things that I think you should know, such as epilepsy. Um, if you experience a dog that has epilepsy, it is recommended that you do not breed the dog and that you uh, spade or neuter the dog and give it out as a pet. And that's uh, the responsible thing to do. I recommend that anyone that gets a press of canario that does have uh, epilepsy, that they immediately contact the breeder uh, and let them know the dog does have epilepsy so that the breeder can uh, do the uh, proper test on the parents to, to weed out uh, possibly uh, producing, reproducing such a dog and uh, do the correct uh, 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 things to prevent it from happening again. Another problem with the breed is uh, osteochondritis, which is a uh, health issue in the breed that causes rapid growth in large versions of the breed, and it, it causes the uh, forearms to knuckle over. It is self-corrected, it's nothing to panic about, but it's also because of uh, a lot of people overfeeding the dog and giving it too much protein. Overfeeding and overexercising a puppy before it has fully developed its joints can lead to a, a joint problems. The reason being is that these dogs are growing at such a rapid pace that their joints have not caught up to their actual uh, growth process. Therefore, it is very important that uh, as a responsible uh, press a owner that you don't overfeed your dog and don't over exercise your dog until it has reached at least a one year of age and Then it could be uh, it should be safe enough for you to take it for long walks because I have people that want to uh, Do three mile walks with a five-month-old puppy. That's just you're, you're setting yourself up for some real problems later on joint wise Sorak is uh, three years old He is very very uh, confident. He has uh, a lot of prey drive. He is uh, very weary of strangers. He is uh, a, a borderline uh, uh, friendly, but uh, you would have to be introduced to him and time would have to be spent with me, you, and Sirach, uh 
uh, he's, he's not going to let you get close to him unless I introduce you to him and you spend some time with him. Sirach is very weary of strangers uh, and he's very protective of the family. Um, he is not what I consider one of my friendlier presses. Mike Tyson is a very, very intelligent dog. He's uh, very uh, uh, protective. He's very uh, suspicious of strangers. He, uh, he is a little bit more balanced as far as his, uh, his temperament uh, with, uh, with, with strange people. Uh, when, when he sees you talking to me, he automatically recognizes you as uh, someone that doesn't, that, that doesn't pose a threat. Tyson is about 25 inches at the withers. He is approximately 138 pounds. He is uh, very, he's, a, he's three years old. Sativa is considered a dirty fawn. Um, she's she's, she's uh, 20, 26 inches at the withers. She is a uh, balanced temperament. She has a balanced temperament. Uh, she's very pr high prey driven. She's, uh, she's very uh, uh, protective, very uh, weary of strangers. And uh, she's a well-rounded guard dog. She's three years old. Luna is... 25 inches at the withers, about 120 pounds. She is uh, very, very protective, very, very weary of strangers, but she gets along really well with kids and with family. Her drive is, is amazing. Um, she's about three and a half years old. Remy de Macho Grande is a son to Sorak and Luna. Six months old and he's about 90 pounds. Remy is an exceptional uh, Presa Canario. Temperament is, is strong. His intellect is outstanding. He, he learns quick. He's a, a, a very uh, protective and weary dog. His drive is, 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 is on the top of the chart. The breedings that I'm doing in today's time far exceed the breedings that I did, let's say, 10 years ago due to the fact that I have been weeding out uh, being responsible, educating the buyers, and taking all the necessary uh, health tests and steps needed to uh, keep this breed healthy and keep this breed uh, balanced as far as temperament. Because the breed is still developing as a breeder, it is critical and important that we share information one with another and we document the different health problems and temperament problems that exist within the breed. We educate each other on what uh, bloodlines are amplifying the different traits that we are trying to get rid of. This is a, a, a way to, uh, I feel, better the breed and educate uh, the world about this, this awesome breed that I have fallen in love with. Thank you for your time. My name is Arthur Harris with Macho Grande Canarios. It has been a pleasure spending time and explaining and going through the, uh, the ins and outs, the outs and ends of the breed. And again, you should, be, you should consider all of the information that I have given you before deciding that a Presa Canario is fit for you. And you should also take in consideration that this is a serious breed and that you must have time to spend with this particular breed. And if you're gonna just put a dog in the backyard and not take time out to, uh, to train and to properly socialize and spend adequate time with the dog, that it's a complete disaster in the hands of the wrong person.